In today's video, we're gonna go over the top 10 things that you probably forgot were in Apex Legends. From game-breaking glitches to just downright annoying stuff. Starting it off with number 10, who remembers the Gibby Bounce? This was a glitch where players could throw Octane's ultimate jump pad onto Gibraltar's shield. And as long as the Gibraltar player continued to aim down sights, keeping up his shield, this player could then see through it and fire through Octane's jump pad, but also be able to look at the ground and fly around as if they were taking Octane's jump pad. This was quickly patched and never really was a game-breaking glitch, but it was really fun while it was around. You could even stack caustic traps on it and just walk around and gas people out. Number 9 is one that I think a lot of pro players actually really miss. This was called B-Hop Healing. B-Hop Healing was pretty much a game mechanic that would allow you to keep sliding while you were healing as long as you kept bouncing. Bouncing is in spamming your jump button, which most people that played on mouse and key would bind it to their scroll wheel. By strafing left and right, your character would continue to have momentum and allow you to move quickly while you were continuously healing and getting away from fights or enemies. This was the game mechanic that a lot of pro players actually quit playing the game Game once they took it out, claiming that with this function there was a large skill gap that players would have to learn and they could use. But in the end, Apex did end up taking it out, and I think a lot of you probably didn't even know this ever existed. Number 8 Elite Q. Apex Elite Q was a limited time mode that was introduced in Season 1, only available to play for less than a month, where basically players would drop down into a regular King's Canyon lobby and battle their way to the end, except the ring closed faster and the out of bounds damage was very much increased. The point in playing this mode was to be able to unlock some Elite Q badges. The Elite Streak Badge, which displays your best Elite Top 5 streak, so however many games you won or gotten to at least the top five would display here, and the Elite 888 badge, which is you have to win at least eight Apex Elite Q matches with eight different legends, along with having at least eight kills in each game. Number seven, punch boosting. Back at the beginning of season 11, there was a new game movement mechanic that players discovered called punch boosting, where essentially you could just go to a top of a hill, crouch down, hitting the opposite direction of where you're punching, and the punch mechanic would actually move your character and give it momentum. If you could perfect the timing and continue to punch, you could travel at high rates of speed all across the map. Sadly, this was removed with the Season 12 update, but could you imagine how the game would be today if it was still in? Number 6 muzzle flash. If you played early seasons of Apex Legends, you definitely remember how important a golden barrel stabilizer was. You could be getting in fights with other people using R301s or R99s and never be able to see anything on the screen. It used to be a literal meme. The gunfire would take up the entire screen and make you lose enemies in the middle of gunfights, to the point where PC players would go into the game files and change it to where they didn't have any muzzle flash anymore. This was something that players could get banned for changing, so not too many people actually did it it was fixed with the upcoming seasons number five the wingman now we all know what the wingman is and use it on a day-to-day -day basis but if you remember from the very early seasons of apex this gun was unbeatable with a high rate of fire doing maximum damage with headshots and skull piercers this gun also only took heavy ammo and it even had a larger mag much different than the wingman now that uses sniper ammo and the maximum mag that you can have is nine bullets but over time with patches and nerves it's become the wingman that we all know today Oh my god. Number four, shotgun reload cancel. Now, although this wasn't in the game very long, while it was in there, it was a huge skill gap. This was essentially the same mechanic that you would use in older Call of Duties where you could YY or just swap weapons back and forth to cancel a reload, allowing you to shoot the gun faster. Number three, single fire keybinds. Around the release of season 10, players actually realized that you could bind your fire button to your scroll wheel, allowing players to scroll up and down using this keybind, which would make their single fire shoot faster than their fully auto. Although most players used the Hemlock, the R301 NP2020 was a valid second choice. Some people thought different though, and actually did side-by-side -side comparisons to see which one actually killed faster. Putting it next to a timer actually turns out that it was slower than a full auto. If you guys ever did it, what do you think about it? Number 2. Bin Bouncing 
during season one, there was actually a glitch where players were able to store power in the supply bins just by getting in it or getting on the side of it and punching it over and over. By punching it over and over, all the momentum that you would have from the punch would actually somehow get stored into the bin. And once a player jumped or mantled onto it, it would launch them in the direction that they were punching the longest. Some players would be able to hide in the storm and then use this to get out of it quickly. But most of all, it was really just a bunch of fun and a cool way to get to the top of the map and rotate. Now, before we get to number one, let's take a look at a couple honorable mentions. Did you know that in season zero, even if you were playing pubs, if you left more than three games without your team fully dying, that you could actually be hit with a leave penalty and not be able to play for minutes or up to hours. Maybe this should make a comeback. What do you guys think? Ziplines used to not have any kind of cooldown or limit of how many times you could use them. Experienced players were able to jump back and forth on ziplines and evade all enemy bullets. It got so bad to the point where pathfinders would literally just sit and in circle and just jump back and forth on their zipline because nobody could hit them. But now, although you do still have a little bit of movement capability with them, they have been nerfed pretty severely. Disruptor rounds on the alternator was probably one of the best slash worst things they could have added into the game. It made the alternator the second best weapon in the game, behind the wingman of course. This thing melted and you knew if someone had it because you could actually hear them from so far away. But if you had all of these attachments plus a digi threat, you were almost unstoppable. We got him. This, this hop up is insane if you guys haven't seen it. I'm sure whenever you pick up a Mozambique, you probably either think one of two things. Eh, it'll do, I guess. Or I'd rather fight with my hands. But did you know that whenever Hammer Points first came out for the Mozambique, it actually slapped? It even had the ability to hit 102 with a headshot. Mozambique. And finally, number one, infinite free falling. This was probably the most broken game mechanic that has ever been in any battle royale. Before season one even dropped, it was discovered that if you were on mouse and key and you were flying in off of the ship or off of a balloon, once your character got to the point where it was hovering down, you would have to hold down the grenade button, move your mouse backwards, and slingshot yourself back into the sky, giving you the ability to constantly stay in the air or fly in every direction that you want. This was probably one of the first bugs that you would actually get banned for. And even though it was quickly patched, this was probably one of the best times to be able to land on teams and get high kill games. I mean, think about it. You could land in wetlands, loot up a little bit, and then fly all the way to Skull Town in a second. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and turn those post notifications on so that you don't miss any new uploads. What do you miss most from previous Apex seasons, and did I cover it in this video? Let me know down in the comments.